Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, along with Tony Hager. This is Global Wrestling News. Well, college football has its Heisman Trophy. We have the Hodge Trophy. And earlier this week, Win Magazine, Culture House, Dan Hodge Trophy, it was awarded to Penn State's two-time, two-time NCAA champ, Zane Rutherford. The award has gone out to the most dominant collegiate wrestler since 1995. Here to talk about that most prestigious of awards is Win Magazine publisher, Brian Van Clay. Thanks, Scott. I'm doing uh, doing well. It's a it's a pleasure to be here today for this neat honor. To start things off, tell us who the four Hodge finalists were for this year. Yeah, so we're really proud of this overall group of four. Uh, there was two Nittany Lions up for the award: uh, Jason Nolf and Zane Rutherford, and two uh, Olympic medalists from 2016 turned collegians and NCAA champs in uh, Kyle Snyder from Ohio State and Jaden Cox from Missouri. And the, the 2017 Win Magazine Culture House Dan Hodge Trophy winner is? Right. It is our pleasure to name the 2017 Dan Hodge Trophy winner as Zane Rutherford from Penn State. And tell us what set Rutherford apart from the other three. Granted, they're all three uh, very talented and worthy, but what set Rutherford apart? Well, he had the most pins, Scott. He was uh, he was 28-0 uh, with 17 falls and 7 tech falls. So the 17 pins out of uh, 28 matches is a incredible pinning percentage of, uh, of 61 percent uh higher than you know a higher pin total than than any of the other guys uh the next closest pin total was his teammate Nolf, who had 14 pins in uh, in 27 matches so as you alluded to all four are obviously extremely dominant uh college wrestlers all four certainly would be very worthy dan hodge trophy uh, recipients, but I, I think at the end of the day for the Hodge Trophy voting committee, which is made up of 43 people this year, each year it goes up by one because each uh, new winner gets a vote um, in the following year's award. Obviously, next year Zane will be a Hodge Trophy winner, but he'll also still be competing, so he won't get a vote. Uh, but of those 43 people that voted this year, uh, Zane got 33 first place votes and second place actually in the uh, Hodge voting went to uh, Jaden Cox of Missouri, the 197 pound uh, three time NCAA champion and Olympic bronze medalist. He had five first place ballots, uh, ballots out of the uh, 43. Uh, Kyle Snyder got third with four first place votes and uh, Nall finished in fourth with three first place votes. So every one of the finalists got uh, several votes, uh, but the uh, clear far and away winner was uh, Zane with, with 33 of 43 uh, votes cast. And then in the fan vote, uh, Scott, we also do a, a fan vote. As, as you well know, it's been a lot of fun here the last few years on the website. Uh, we had nearly 23,000 uh, unique people vote uh, last week, and uh, Zane Rutherford won the fan vote total as well. And because he won the composite fan vote, then he gets two additional first place uh, Hodge Trophy voting committee ballots uh, to bring his total to, to 33. So he had 31 votes of the 43 from the committee and then two uh, final votes from uh, being the fan vote winner. Will he make the cover of uh, Win Magazine? Well, it comes out uh, this week, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the cover uh, speak for itself. Obviously, he was... Uh, a uh, he was on an extremely dominant Penn State team that amazingly won five NCAA titles in a row. Uh, but I'll I'll let that uh, that cover um, speak for itself once it hits the press. That's as part of the fun of our NCAA issue, Scott. Brian, it's always good to talk to you. Congratulations! Another outstanding year for wrestling, as told through the pages of Win Magazine. And Zane Rutherford is the 2017. Dan Hodge Trophy winner. I want to thank you, Brian, your talent and staff, and of course, everybody at uh, Wind Magazine and Culture House, those that voted, uh, both the general uh, public and, of course, and the fans, as uh, not general public, the fans, the fans of wrestling, and of course, those that sit on the committee as well. Brian, thanks for the time, and again, thank you for the coverage this year. It was outstanding. 
Thanks, Scott. We appreciate the opportunity to be on this morning, and it's it's a great sign for college wrestling. We have these uh, these four outstanding finalists, and again, congratulations to Zane Rutherford. Everybody in the world of wrestling should have a subscription to Win Magazine, but should they not have a sub subscription, how can they subscribe? Yeah, it's easy. They can go on our website at uh, win-magazine.com or certainly call our toll-free number at 888-888. Uh, 305-0606. Brian Van Clay, Win Magazine. Thanks, Brian. 33 of the 43 votes went to Rutherford. I personally voted for Jaden Cox. I believe that the, the Hodge Award represents so much more than just takedowns and pins. I think community service, singing, dancing, playing guitar, being a much uh, broader individual in terms of living life. That's what I think the Hodge Award stands for. Well, I mean, if you're, if you're com com comparing the, you know, the Heisman to the Hodge, I mean, the Heisman Trophy is supposed to go for the most dominant, you know, the best college football player. And that's why I see the Hodge Trophy is the most dominant pins, tech falls, and, and that's just uh, two different things, two different, two different spectrums. I do feel like we should have, like, a career award that goes out to a guy like Jaden Cox who has done everything for our wrestling community on the international scene to college. But uh, Zane Rutherford was easily the most dominant guy on the mat. Nobody really had a shot. He got had a couple times where it was a uh, you know kind of a little scary for him. But right. in the end, he tech falled uh, in the finals to to win a national title, his second national title. So he deserves the Hodge Trophy. All right, so he may deserve the Hodge Trophy. And if those other things should not weigh in, let's take them out because they are on my list of things I need to consider. Let's make it a little more clear. After the break, Campbell University head coach Kerry Collette wants a big change in college wrestling. That's next on GWN, thanks to Adidas Wrestling. Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. Colat wants to change to the NCAA redshirting rules, and here to talk about it and elaborate on those ideas is the head coach of the Campbell Camels himself, Kerry Colat. Coach, thanks for the time. Uh, thanks for, uh, for having me on. I appreciate it. Congratulations. The recent news, of course, that uh, Campbell is going all in for the Campbell wrestling program. Talk a little bit about what's been happening there on the campus. They say the creek is rising. Yeah, that's uh, that's the term we use around here, and and um, yeah, I mean we got back. We had a great season. I mean our our, our season when uh, it started a, a little rough, I would say, and then as the the season progressed, our team continued to progress, and and um, I think going into the SoCon Championships, we saw we had a shot at at, at winning it, and um, so the guys did great, wrestled awesome at the SoCon, um, won the team team championship, and then we were able to take five guys to the NCAA tournament, which is uh, a first in Campbell history. The most we'd ever taken is two. And then Austin, Cry I mean, um, Nathan Kreiser, it was his fourth trip to the NCAA tournament, and he finally got on the podium and, and accomplished a goal that he'd been working, you know, really hard to reach. And and so um, with all that, you know, our, our program was was noticed, and we were getting noticed as, you know, the last couple of years as well. But 
um, you know, from where I started with the program and to where we're at now, it's, it's been a huge leap and, and our administration and, and all our fans have really noticed it. And, and so that's caused a lot of changes to start happening here. All of us at Takedown are following you on Twitter. Uh, we're getting the press releases. In this case, let's go to that uh, most recent um, opinion you stated and that uh, you would like to get rid of the red shirt season. Why? Well, I think as a coach, you know, you, what happens is with, with wrestling, we're, we're unique. You know, we're a unique sport. We're not like other sports. And and um, we can't substitute guys the way other programs could substitute. I mean, to give you an example, like somebody had used it at baseball. You know, the, the guy might be an outfielder, uh, but something happens to your third baseman, you could you could slide that guy up. Well, I don't, if my 25-pounder goes down, my heavyweight can't fill in for him. And, you know, with the red shirting system right now, it, it really creates a divide between the team. You have starters and non-starters. As much as you don't say it, you wind up managing two different teams. And what I'm saying is these kids do better when they're in the action. We've said forever, like, if you want to keep kids off drugs in the streets or schools or anything else, get them involved in sports. Well, what happens with these these red shirts is they, they have too much idle time and, and not that they're doing bad things, but... You know, why not have them involved? Why not have a kid where we can substitute for a dual me and it doesn't count against this year? And, and why don't we move down the road of counting postseasons? So you get five years to complete four postseasons and uh, you can substitute a kid out and, and for the dual meet se se season. I think it'd be really great for fans. You know, we might have, um, you know, Mark Hall might still, I mean, he won the NCAA title, but he may he may have not used this postseason had Sanderson thought he could get it done without him. Um, you know, and, and they showed they, they might have been able to do it without him. And, uh, you know, he could have just used a dual meet season this year and uh, and then come back the following year with postseason. I think I think the only criticism people have is they think it's going to be this extreme um, transition between a dual meet team and a championship team. And it's it really won't with RPI and what's in place. You can't run out and use one guy for an entire dual meet se season and then stick somebody at the end. I mean, you could do it. Um, but that kid could cost you a, a bid for your conference. Um, you better be sure he can get himself the national. So we wouldn't see a drastic change. All I'm saying is this would eliminate the, the forfeits that the smaller programs face. Penn State's got numbers. Ohio State's got numbers. Iowa's got numbers. But some of these smaller programs have caps. They have Title IX caps they have to, to maintain. Um, I'll give you an example. I mean, I coached with Dennis Papadato, so up in, in uh, He's at Hofstra now. He's got a 20-man roster cap. You know, so if he recruited a whole group of new guys, he might be red shirt and 10 guys that, that could that possibly happen and he can't use them. And I just think um, we need to start looking at wrestling as a unique sport. You can't substitute. And I think um, with the transitions that have happened in, in college athletics with Title IX and things of that nature, I think I think the NCAA needs to come back and just maybe look at it. Uh, it it's worth examining as far as I'm concerned. Gary Collat, our guest in the Nike hot seat today. It seems like the number one topic in St. Louis Carrie was official reviews, and I think you know where I'm going with this. Uh, an official makes a call, a coach challenge, challenges a call. In your opinion, should there be a change, and if so, would it be? I don't want to be leading here, so I'll just ask you open. Uh, if there should be a change, what should it be? It, sh it should be an independent party that should review you. I mean, you we shouldn't have the guy who made the call on the mat, even with it, and, and with the second official with him. The guys on the mat shouldn't do the review. They should... They should put it in the hands of somebody else. Look, I, I don't I don't think there's any coach in the United States that has a problem with a mistake. We don't have a problem with with a, a bad call. Um, th those happen. And the review process is, is supposed to give us all the opportunity to say, hey, let's go back and make sure we, we got the right call. But you're asking a guy who could be in a, a situation. Well, it could be a situation where you, it, the match could be in the, the semis of the NCAA tournament. And this call determines whether it goes to overtime or not. I mean, let's take the pressure off of that guy. There's already enough. And let's just get an independent review out there who can who can look at it without emotion and just review that segment of the match. I mean, that's that's the fairest way and the best way to do it. Kerry, it's great to have you on the show today. It's uh, outstanding to have you in, in the Nike hot seat. I truly appreciate the time. Anybody you want to thank uh, on the way out? Uh, I mean, just just pretty much, you know, my my family and, and the guys on the team who are also my family, and my staff. I mean, it's it's like I said, it, it, you're, you're only as good as the people you're surrounded by. And I'm surrounded by good people. So my job gets easier, you know, and as long as the recruits keep buying in and the guys on the team keep buying in, it, it, it's easy to coach under these conditions. And, and now it's just every year, you know, achieving more than what you did the previous year. And if you if you fall short, you, you find out why you fell short and you fix it and 
And those are the kind of people we have around us right now. So, you know, like I said, we're, we're, the future looks bright, and we just keep on building. Freak Show continues with this guy. Dude is good, good, good. Kerry Collette, thank you so much. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. All right, good or bad idea? Yeah, I, I think this is a great idea for those smaller programs. A 20-player cap, I mean, that just seems insane to me at the right. Division One level. I mean, that's not very many kids to choose from on a 10-man roster at varsity level. So this is this makes sense for those smaller schools. Would other sports have a bigger problem with it? I mean, I would assume it's uh, really – we can't just do one. It's got to be all all sports because everyone's going to complain about it. We've got Title IX, all that stuff. That's why we have these caps in place because of Title IX. You know, Hostra's capped at 20. I mean, I just uh, – it's gonna be. It's gonna take a lot of ish, you know, a lot of meetings probably to get something like this passed. But wrestling, I think, is different than other sports. If we are capped at this, we should be able to get some some different rules through. I like it that guys get a chance to rest and other guys get a shot at the varsity level. But we also have to think about the fans. So what if we go to Carver Hawkeye Arena just to watch Thomas Gilman? But guess what? He's taking the night off. If he doesn't wrestle in the main attraction, attendance is gone. Fans are unhappy. Fans are pissed. Yeah, I think that's something to be to think about. I I remember seeing on social media where LeBron James was supposed to be at this, you know, big time. They were doing giving away bobbleheads. He didn't show up, and fans were upset. I mean, he needed the rest, but the fans came there to see LeBron James. He's the guy. So you want to see Thomas Gilme, you want to see Zane Rutherford. Fans come to see those guys, so attendance could weaken if they can just stay at home and possibly watch it on TV or online. Next up, an Iowa Hawkeye gets the governmental recognition he deserves. That's next. Stay tuned. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one. Well, as they would any day, the Iowa State Senate and the House of Representatives opened their respective sessions Wednesday with a prayer and a pledge of allegiance. But this past Wednesday, the opening announcements concluded with a Go Hawks from Corey Clark. The Iowa Senate voted unanimously to approve Senate Resolution 14, proclaiming March 29th as Corey Clark Recognition Day. Clark, a University of Iowa senior and native of nearby Pleasant Hill, was recognized for winning the 133-pound NCAA Division I Wrestling Championship. We have a special guest with us today, a distinguished guest from the University of Iowa, Corey Clark, who won a Division I National Championship at 133 pounds. He is the 19th Iowa wrestler to become a four-time All-American. 
In 2015 and 2016, he finished runner-up, and this year, he got it done by winning the national championship. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Senate that the Senate congratulates Mr. Clark on becoming the 2017 NCAA Division I wrestling champion at 133 pounds and designates March 29, 2017 as Corey Clark Recognition Day in Iowa. It's an accomplishment that very few Iowans will ever reach, so it's a, one that has the merit to be recognized by the Iowa Senate and understand how much uh, training goes behind something like that. And there's always setbacks, but it's always fun to celebrate the victories, and so I really thought it was important to have Corey come here to the Iowa Senate and be recognized. The Senator from Jackson moves Senate Resolution 14. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Senate Resolution 14 is adopted. It's a pleasure to be honored by all of you. I, I love this state. I love this governor. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. <laughs> It was a great experience. It was a pleasure to be honored by the Iowa Senate and the House of Representatives, and just a good time. Hi, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you. Yep, Welcome to the governor's office. We're glad to have you here. How are you, Jerry? Jerry? How's it going? Good to see governor, you. Governor, good to see you. It made me feel, you know, aware that a lot more people than I thought cared actually care. I mean, just a lot of great people showing their feelings towards the sport of wrestling and towards me and what I achieved. Tony, is there anything more Iowan than the state recognizing the sport? I mean, I think that I saw that on Twitter. I mean, everything was like, that's just Iowa, you know. And I don't know if this happens in other states. Maybe we just don't hear about it or we don't celebrate it as much. I know Grandview, they're obviously here in Iowa. They were recognized on the state floor a couple of years ago. They're going to be uh, probably recognized here in a, in a couple of weeks. But, uh, I, you know, it's not uncommon to see an athlete on the state center floor. What I'm pretty upset by, we didn't see him throw Terry Brands on the state floor or maybe throw Terry Brands stance uh, on, on the floor too. But uh, to Grab up Terry Brands yeah, and throw him over There's the railing. There's probably a few people that want to do that. But. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, Grandview will be recognized once again very soon. We'll have more on that story next time. Global Wrestling News continues with quick hits after this short timeout brought to you by our friends at Barbarian Apparel. Some of the best barbarian apparel. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. When looking for a quality pizza, you need a place that makes everything from scratch, using fresh ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. And if you can grab a lotto ticket while you're there, well, lucky you. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. All right, Lehigh's Pat Santoro is interviewed for the head coach spot at Pittsburgh. Lehigh placed 11th at the NCAAs, but some fans and alum are not happy with the team's performance. Santoro won two national championships for the Panthers and is still Pitt's only four-time All-American. This would be an amazing hire for Pitt and a major mistake for Lehigh. 
I mean, this this makes 100% perfect sense for Pitt to do this. They're going after an alum, guy that has had some success. This is a huge mistake for Lehigh. I mean, they've got to, this guy that put out this article, he's got, they've got to be wanting to take that down right away. Any negative activity that Santora has towards him, towards the university, I think you got to squash it. I mean, think about this. They have as many national titles as the University of Iowa. Lehigh finished 11th. Iowa State was just in state here, Iowa. They finished like 57th with one point. I mean, th- that there's no more story program than Iowa State. Lehigh's doing it at a, their 11th. I mean, with I, way little resources than the other schools. I was really shocked when I read this. I called all my my contacts on campus. First of all, Lehigh just finished 11th in the country. They won an NCAA t- title. What more can you ask for out of a head coach? I mean, what is a more? What do you think is more important to you as a coach? Winning an e, you know, EIWA conference title or getting your kids to win NCAA titles? I would say the NCAA title is way more important. So you know, the the writers going after Cornell winning all these EIW titles. You know, whoop de do. I mean, Ohio State won the Big Ten title. Penn State came back and won the NCAA title. What are you gonna remember? You're gonna remember the NCAA title that Penn State won. No one really cares about the Big Ten championship. It doesn't mean anything. I if mean, we it's a war. Course, if we follow course, everybody that finished in the top 20 that wasn't number one should be fired. Is that what this guy's Get saying? Get him gone. Get him gone. Two-time NCAA, and we're joking, by the way, two-time NCAA champ Jesse Delgado will compete at the U.S. Open in Las Vegas. Delgado made his first senior freestyle debut last month, winning bronze at the Sierra Plata in Cuba. After two years off, can Delgado shake things up at 57? I mean, the, just mentioning this guy being in Vegas. I mean, I, we're not going to be able to watch it. How many people are going to travel to see Jesse Delgado, a former star in college? But anyways, you know, this is... Um, what I remember from Delgado, extremely difficult to score on. He's definitely a scrambler, kind of like Nico Magaludus. So it's going to be interesting to see how he has transitioned to freestyle because he's normally used to, you know, you get in a leg and he just does a freestyle roll. He does a, he, but you can't expose yourself, obviously, in freestyle. So it'll be interesting to see how many points he gives up defensively. This coming from the owner of the number one wrestling website in the country. Eh. Delgado, Megalotus was one of my favorite college rivalries, period. I'm excited to see Jesse back on the mat no matter where it is. And yeah, well, I travel to see it most probably. Yeah, I mean, uh, Megalutus is my guy, though, here. If we're going Megalutus, Delgado, now at this point in time, Megalutus is really a big threat at 57 kilograms. Maybe Delgado will come in and shock us and be in crazy good shape, but we just haven't heard from him, no rumblings, if he's coaching, you know, where he's at in his uh, his training. So tip to the cap to Nico Megalutus in this match. All right, we're out of time for this week. We'll tell you about it in the coming weeks. For all of us here at GWN, I'm Scott Casper. He's Tony Hager. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.